Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next base destruction video, and this is the WHF2 war. I'm gonna have a recap of that too, uh, coming out tomorrow probably, just because I wanna get as many uh, attacks from this war shown as possible, because there was some awesome uh, stuff coming out of this war, and I think it deserves to be shown in a number of videos over a few days. So anyway, um, taking a look at this base, uh, you can see that it's kind of an interesting setup, and you see there's only three Teslas and three giant bombs. There's one Tesla in the top corner that you can't see, a troll Tesla at the top there. There's also, um, I can't figure out for the life of me where the fourth giant bomb is. It wasn't shown in any of the attacks from what I saw. Maybe I just missed it, I'm not sure. But um, somewhere there's a fourth giant bomb. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, the three are there. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this base, about how it was attacked, the strengths, the weaknesses of the base, of the attacks, kind of just go through the progression to three-starring the space as we always do in these base destruction videos. So hope you guys are enjoying this series. i um, been doing it for quite a while now, and uh, it's always a fun one to do. We're trying to do a Town Hall 10 actually for this video, but I couldn't find a good Town Hall 10 base that had kind of a nice progression to the three-star. So we're, we're stuck with another Town Hall 9, but still still always makes a good video. Anyway, um, taking a look at this base, you can see it has this little inlet in the base. And the idea behind that basically is that it's trying to try to funnel some of your troops out of the core. Um, it's, it's making it a little bit harder to keep your troops inside the base. And we'll see how that actually plays into it because the hero compartment's right here. So think HGHB, HGHP, um, those attacks. When you come in, you usually come in from the hero compartment. It's trying to make these troops kind of double around and go out. And we'll see how that plays into the second attack. Um, so that's one thing about this base. Also, it's really segmented into, you can see there's a lot of little compartments all around the base to try to make it hard just to move your troops through. So it's trying to kind of mess up the troop pathing, which is really the best thing you can do at Town Hall 9 right now, is try to screw up pathing because you can't overpower people, not with level 3 bowlers, especially if they have 30-30 heroes. Uh, at the level the troops are and compared to the defenses, you can't overpower people. Um, so because of that, with seeing people try to screw up the pathing, um, and you can see the air defenses are kind of on the outside of the base, and you might wonder why people don't try to exploit that. That's kind of a new thing I've been seeing, and maybe it might become something bigger, because the idea is that, yeah, you can get to these air defenses really easily, but now you don't have any good places for your lava hounds to kind of sit inside the base, so they're not going to be tanking as efficiently, and the idea is that the balloons will kind of get stuck by themselves, and all the wizard towers, the Teslas, uh, the air sweepers will take them out. So that's kind of the idea. I, this base wasn't hit by air, so I think it was successful at least in stopping people from attempting it. So we'll see how the air defenses uh, in this kind of position play out uh, in the future. But I think it has potential, especially uh, considering that people aren't trying this base with air. That might hint that it, it is something that's worth looking into. So we're focusing on ground for this base because all three attacks were ground. And like I said, the main thing is trying to screw up the troop pathing, whether it's HG, HB, or Valks, just making it difficult to move them through the base. And once they're inside the base, the core, as you can see, leads out to there. So that's trying to uh, get your troops outside of the base on these kind of high HP buildings, um, various stuff like that. So it's a pretty solid base. It held up against uh, two attacks before it was three-starred by the final and third attack. So we'll take a look at all three and talk about each one. The first one, it did have a lot of uh, little problems because there was air traps, there was the troll Tesla, various th things th that the attacker couldn't have anticipated. And I'm forgetting who it is right now, but we'll see in like a minute. Um, so the first attacker comes in with a queen walk. The idea is to make her walk down this way, but um, the funneling gets a little screwed up, just doesn't quite work out. She goes this way. Um, from here, he sends in his Valks like this and uh, they kind of go a little weird on him um, a few go to the outside but for the most part they go through the problem is trying to bridge this gap and there's a lot of space to go that way a lot of space to go that way not really a clean route for Valks to go so that hurts the attack and then the hogs are kind of disconnected they're all the way at the bottom here and one thing I've learned at Town Hall 10 that I think still translates to Town Hall 9 is that your attack kind of has to all flow together you can't send stuff in on the opposite side of the base most of the time. There are exceptions, but usually, especially if it's all ground um, for an attack, you want everything to kind of flow. 
one thing starts and meets up with the rest of the attack, things tank for each other. You get value that way instead of spreading yourself too thin over the base. So I think that was another factor that uh, hurt this attack. So we'll take a look at it. I didn't describe it too much in detail because I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, we do have three attacks to show. So let's take a look at the first attack. So the first attacker was Darth Nubis. Um, you can see he has the Queen Walk that he's about to start. But first, he drops down a few troops. The Troll Tasma takes them out. Some of these air traps take them out. Uh, that Archer Tower takes out the minions. It's just really unfortunate there. He's going to have some trouble funneling his Valks into the compartment. He wants them because of that. But also, right here, uh, starts in with this Queen Walk. And we'll go... I just want to speed this up a little bit. Because she just takes out these buildings uh, right here. Wall Breakers her in. Um, you can see where the, what the plan was right there. But uh, the Town Hall is going to pull her up north. And it's something that probably is difficult to see during the planning stages of this attack. It just kind of happened. Um, I'm not going to say it was a poor planning because some things are just very difficult to foresee. And uh, that was one of them. So anyway, not too damaging. I mean, she's still got some buildings taken out. It's not like her healers are getting shot down or anything. Uh, but drops down those giants. They go up to that troll Tesla, which he probably didn't even see, to be honest. Um, but anyway, uh, it works out okay. The funnel is getting created to some extent uh, by the giants and the wizard. The queen kind of created the other side of the funnel, so that works out okay. Uh, right there, the wall breakers go in, and a few valves go to the outside, but really the main group is going in. So I think he might have gotten a little bit lucky, but also just uh, a good job, you know, improvising a little bit, getting the funnel done. The main thing is that baby dragon. It's going to pretty much haunt him for the whole attack because he cannot find a way to get it down. He forgets to drop the poison on it. Um, but besides that, the Valks just really, there's no clear path for them to go. They kind of make their way into this compartment, but you can see there's a little buffer between the hero compartment there and the defenses uh, where the archer tower is. There's that spell factory, the builder's hut. There's a ton of walls in between them and the next defenses. So he comes in here with the hogs, and uh, they're going to get you know some okay value, but it's too disconnected. The, the cannons, which are shooting those hogs, um, should be being tanked by the Valks, but things are a little bit too spread out. Um, the defenses are free to take out the hogs while the Valks are still stuck on a wall. Uh, right now, I think he's going to drop that uh, poison finally. That baby dragon could have gone down a lot earlier if he had seen that, but I guess he was scrolled too far over, forgot he had a poison, and then he kind of missed, which was funny. But um, anyway, the queen healers are going down, just kind of unfortunate there. Uh, but at this point, the attack was already over, so good try to Darth Nubis. The plan was probably pretty solid, just a little bit of a few speed bumps he couldn't have anticipated, and I think um, a few things with the kind of the flow of the attack just weren't quite right. So anyway, we'll uh, go ahead and fast forward to the end. Then we'll back out and take a look at Iceman, kind of what he did for this base uh, using the HBHP attack. So let's take a look at what his plan was. Okay, so Iceman, like I said, is going to come in with the HBHP attack. Uh, going to drop down all his, uh, you know, his giants, all that stuff in here. And that air defense is actually kind of sneaky because you can't drop down giants and uh, healers on it. And he doesn't use giants. I don't know why I'm saying that. But just as a general note, uh, you can't do that because the air defense can reach the healers because the giants go right up to that wall. So an important thing to take a look at that's actually pretty sneaky by the attacker. And it's not that damaging on any kind of air attack. So uh, just keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, comes in with the P.E.K.K.A.s. I kind of forget the beginning, how the funnel worked, but um, enters in right here to the hero compartment. Doesn't have too much of a problem with the funneling. His P.E.K.K.A.s, his healers, his, you know, bowlers, his heroes, everything moving in. And then right here is the problem. And this is why this base is actually pretty effective. Because the troops kind of make their way in here, then they go out around the base. And that's, that's kind of what hurt the attack. Because when your troops go outside the base, that completely ruins any kind of HGHB or HGHP. Because the power of those attacks are things staying together, things getting splash healed, getting great value for your rage spells. All, that kind of, all those kinds of things. So by everything spreading out, the attack basically died. Looked like kind of another one of the go wipe attacks. So, I mean, maybe not the best base to try this out on, just because it's also very segmented. It's hard to guide your troops along. A jump spell might have helped to kind of let his troops at least where he wanted them to go initially, or try to funnel them a little better and uh, maybe drop some stuff in here. But just a tough base to use this attack on. We'll take a look. Um, wasn't that bad of a plan. Just didn't work out for him, so let's watch uh, Iceman's attack. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start off going at that hero compartment. Like I said, 
drops down the baby dragon, pretty good placement, uh, nice easy funnel right there, baby dragon at the bottom, uh, this guy didn't have too many archer towers or anything, that one baby dragon does get shot down by the, uh, the air defense, but it still gets its job done, maybe a little bit of expensive for that 10 troop space, but uh, it, it did the job at least. There go the P.E.K.K.A.s, um, the healers are going to go down to that air defense, or they're going to start getting shot down, because like I said, um, that air defense is pretty sneaky, because it's so far to the outside, he's going to lose like two healers, or I think maybe just one, uh, before it goes down, so tricky stuff there. You can see everything is initially going into the base right here, but uh, right there, everything is going to go on the wall, the CC troops kind of draw stuff in a weird direction, uh, and from there, the first wall they get through is off to the right, or off to the top of that compartment, because that's where the CC troops drew them, and uh, the outside of the base is going to be where the Pekas go. I uh, just couldn't quite, if he had dropped a few troops on those uh, top buildings, maybe if like an, some wizards or something, that might have kept them in the base, that might have kept the attack alive, but also the air defenses were getting on the healers either way, I think. So just a tough base, this is a good base, I don't know if you guys uh, want to try to, you know, take a few tips from it, but this is a very good base uh, for Town Hall 9, and it worked out very well. Actually, as I, as I say this, I hope people aren't copying this base in Genesis, because uh, people were kind of mad at me one time when uh, they were basically taking down the design of another base to try to try out in, F in friendly challenges and possibly use in war and uh, people were not happy when I showed it on the channel and showed where all the traps are so I hope they're not using this base uh, as, this, as this attack kind of peters out um, because some of these bases you can uh, use you know as your own base in war and or use a very similar version of it because nothing's a better indicator of how good a base is than your clan actually attacking it in war so just interesting there. So hope they don't use this base or they haven't been uh, trying to, you know, test this base out for possible use. I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Um, so anyway, nice attack to Iceman. The main thing, though, was the P.E.K.K.A.s going to the outside. Just a tough base. That nice little inlet uh, kind of allows the troops to exit the base pretty easily. So anyway, we'll fast forward to the end. Uh, one more attack to look at. Very nice attack. Let's see how it was eventually three-starred. Okay, so the base was three-starred by, uh, I think, Magoov is his name. Something along those lines. He's somewhat of a new member, so I'm, I don't have his name down completely. Might not have said it on the channel before. But uh, he comes in with an awesome attack here. And one thing is that well, a few principles that I believe are important at Town Hall 9. The first thing is very true at Town Hall 10 also, is the flow of your attack. Are troops leading into each other? Is stuff tanking for each other? Are troops being sent in at angles? that they're protecting the flank of the other troops, that they're funneling each other. Troops can help each other out so much if you send them in at similar angles instead of the opposite sides of the base because you, then you need, you know, their own funneling, their own tanking. Everything is, needs to be doubled almost. Uh, in those support troops that you use have to be doubled in some, in some senses. So part of the, the, part, the thing you want to look for is how an attack flows. And uh, we'll talk about how uh, Magoo's attack Kind of, and t t tell me if I'm saying this wrong in the comments. Some of you guys know how to say his name, I'm sure. Uh, so let me know. Uh, but the the flow of the attack was nice. And also, another important principle is that you don't have to have a plan for every part of the base. Just enough where you can say, my troops can crush this part of the base. And what, whatever's left over, that little chunk, what I have left over is going to be enough. I don't know how it's going to do it, but it's going to take out those buildings, those defenses. All you have to know is how your troops are going to take out the first 75% of the base sometimes. And whatever's left over, if you are confident in the first part, will be plenty to three-star uh, the rest of the base, get that last 25%. So those are two principles that were kind of shown by this attack. Uh, he comes in with a queen walk, just drops her down right here. Wall breakers her in uh, right there. This lets her enter the kind of the base in this direction and uh, clear, you know, pretty much all of this out. And eventually she'll get in there, get those Teslas. Uh, as the attack progresses, but you know, she creates the funnel for the Valks and she's tanking some of the defenses the Valks would otherwise be targeted by, uh, and that's great value. Like I said, your troops are kind of going at the similar angles, things lead into each other, a nice flow in the attack. So, anyway, like I said, he sends the Valks in right here, you know, with the adjacent, uh, adjacent to the queen, and actually kind of towards the bottom, they kind of go in like that and go like that, but basically right there. And then from there, they're just going to kind of make their way through the base. The queen, by clearing this stuff out, is allowing them to, you know, just have a nice little runway they go down. Uh, some of these defenses are touching, which always helps 
draw Valks uh, towards them and uh, has rages, has heals, just lets them make their way into the hero compartment, get this entire chunk of the base taken out. Uh, one thing for Valks, look for those runways, those areas that they can just kind of make their way through a pretty easy funnel. And this is a great example of one. Um, the queen, you know, does the job up here. Uh, she's great against wizard towers, Teslas. Stuff that doesn't have a lot of range because she can take them out one at a time. They can't all target her at once. So look for that on your queen walks. And then at this point, um, everything, you know, this entire part of the base is, you know, taken out. So yes, this there's not a huge plan for that, but there doesn't need to be. He knows what he has left up is going to get the job done. He does have a CC of bowlers, by the way, that I kind of made this a uh, little messy. But he does have a CC of bowlers that do come in with the Valks as well. They add a little bit of range. They also help funnel, funnel the Valks because if there's a building that's going to get them off track uh, to the outside, they can take it out and uh, kind of help funnel the Valks from the inside. So the bowlers add another dimension and uh, crush this base. Got great value for his spells. We'll take a look at the attack and uh, then we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so here is, I believe it's Magoov's 34. McGov, something like that, uh, coming in here with the attack, drops down the wizard just for funneling purposes, uh, right here he'll start with the queen, and uh, one more wizard for that mortar, get that taken out, uh, pretty easy trade right there, there goes the queen, had to create the funnel to keep her from going too far south, I like the baby dragon there because it's going to get great value, it'll get the mortar, it'll get the entire funnel, uh, so that is a good use of the baby dragon in my opinion there, drops down the healers, um, the queen is going to start heading a little bit south, has the wall breakers, and they're actually going to open up both compartments, the elixir uh, storage one as well as the cannon one, uh, but that's just fine for the queen. Drops in the hog, and one thing about the CC composition, I didn't talk about it at all yet, but the baby dragon and the two Valks are enough to make the queen pop her ability, even if there's no defenses on her with those four healers. So that's actually a pretty solid CC composition, because uh, not many other things with you know poison spells can in no other defenses to help can you know make a queen use her ability so that was that's a good cc comp i like that you know a few valks in the baby dragon that works well for town hall nine even though this base is getting three starred i uh, held up pretty well and i think the cc comp definitely helped so anyway like i said the queen's kind of clearing out this funnel uh she's going to be you know a little bit south but she'll head up north for that wizard tower pretty soon and she does a great job funneling for the bowlers for the valks and uh, you can't put a price on that. That would take a lot of troop space if the queen wasn't there. So I can't emphasize this enough. I know I'm kind of you know repeating the same stuff over again. But if your troops can help each other out, can funnel for each other, can tank for each other, uh, that's that's value that can add you know 20 troop space to your attack that you would otherwise have to use to do that job. So important thing to realize there. But anyway, pretty much all his Valks are still up. Almost all his bowlers are still up. And at this point, yeah, there's no plan for the rest of the base really. But he knows, you know what, 75% of the base is gone. I still have pretty much all of my troops left up. I have two heal spells. I have, you know, my everything's almost left up. That this base is going to go down in some way. So, you know, don't, don't try to tailor your army to fit every little corner of the base. As long as it can take out 75% of the base and 75% of your troops will still be left up. Um, the, the, the odds are in your favor as long as you have enough time. Uh, so everything's going down right here. Look at how many troops he has left over. The bowlers, the valks, the king, the queen, the healers, everything. And just that one troll Tesla up top, which he should have brought a balloon for. I uh, can't stress that enough because the balloon's a one-for-one -one trade. You don't want to run, run out of time because of the troll Tesla. So anyway, awesome attack though to Mr. McGov or Mr. McGoove or whatever. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know how to say it. I want to try to finally get down how to say everyone's name in Genesis. That's one of my goals. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Let me know what you think of the base destruction videos and if you want to keep seeing these on a weekly basis. So a uh, recap of this war is coming out soon, like I hinted at at the beginning. I uh, definitely want to show some more great attacks from this war. Uh, good job to both clans, by the way. I'll say that again in my next video as well. So anyway, thanks for watching this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectortron out.